Thank you very much and good morning. I was uh, interested in some of the, the previous papers because uh, we're looking at uh, geophysical relationships visually, what we can see and in, intuit from uh, the correspondences between the data, and I became interested, well, how can we quantify such relationships? So that's what uh, my presentation's about. And let's see here. Is there a laser beam on this? Oh, pretty good. Um, so just uh, you know, a little review. Uh, we look at data sets, and in the real world, uh, here's GPR, magnetic susceptibility, magnetic radiometry. And, uh, and Eileen might recognize some of these. Uh, uh, you can see correspondences visually, right? We see this often between different modalities of survey. And we would think, oh yes, and we look at the correlation between these data sets. Uh, so in the real world, we could see relationships, and then theoretically, uh, you know, resistivity and cognitivity are the theoretical inverses of each other, and uh, high resistivity should correlate with, with greater GPR amplitudes because of the uh, lower conductivity, right? And, uh, thermal infrared and resistivity often uh, parallel, and they're often said to be parallel data sets in some ways. And, and you know, magnetic radiometry in includes uh, in induced components that a magnetic susceptibility meter might pick up, and, and on and on, right? So uh, there's lots of reasons why we should have relationships between various uh, geophysical data sets. And how, how can we uh, object objectively define them? So, uh, well, why not use the correlation coefficient? So <laughs> just to review, uh, you know, Pearson's R, it's uh, basically a, a, a covariance between two data sets, you know, standardized by the, the product of the standard deviations. And it goes from minus one to plus one. And just to review, uh, you know, here's a weak positive, moderate, and a strong positive correlation, right? So highs with highs, lows with lows, and here's a negative correlations from weak to strong. Here's no correlation, R is zero, right? Perfect correlation, it all fits on the line and so on. So we now, st no statistics, right? So <laughs> now I will have a case study here. This was uh, Army City that I, uh, we've published some papers on in the past. Uh, it was uh, used for troop training in the Great War. Uh, and uh, entrepreneurs, business people said, ah, oh, we have, uh, here's the military base let's put ice cream shops and barber shops and movie theaters and exploit the, uh, the soldiers, make some money. But then the war ended after you know a few months because uh, the US entered the war so late. And then the, the town burned down and then it flooded. <laughs> so uh, this is what it looks like today. So, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, test case. We had some funding to do some geophysical data. Uh, exploration here. So we, we did a big project uh, on the site a number of years ago. So we had uh, six different uh, uh, modalities, earth resistance, conductivity, GPR, thermal infrared, magnetic susceptibility, magnetic radiometry. These were by electromagnetic induction, uh, or at least two of uh, And you can see there's a lot of parallel anomalies. We think uh, there must be some strong correlations here. And, uh, as many of you have found when we uh, actually try to quantify correlation, I mean, geophysical correlations are, are pretty low. I mean, uh, uh, you know, you point twos, zeros, and near zeros. And the strongest are, are around, uh, you know, point three. And so if you, if you square that, it's about 9% of the variance in common, which is just, just about nothing, right? So point three squared is 0.09, right? So. Uh, uh, very, very weak relationships that doesn't permit you to really build on what's what's going on uh, in, in these global region-wide correlations. That's a, a 1.6 hectare area we're looking at. So uh, then Eileen Earn of mine here, she uh, did a study with me. These are just part of the data here where we had all these parallel anomalies. Her largest correlation was 0.156. I mean, that's, it says there's really no relationship to me, to me you know. Uh, and then uh, Ogden et al. at a recent CAA meeting, uh, they had uh, resistivity, GPR, and magnetometry, and, and their largest was 0.21. So we're saying there's, there's no relationships yet. Uh, here we, we could see 
Look at the, it's the same, these are uh, uh, pit house structures. And again and again, we see it. So how can correlation be low when we see strong correlation? So uh, uh, it seems like a paradoxical. And theoretically, there should be correlation. Right? Uh, so what, what's going on is that globally, although um, there are, we see some strong relationships, uh, in most of the, the region, there, there's very weak relationships. And in, in, uh, you know, the, the larger area of, of no relationships overriding the smaller areas with strong relationship. They're kind of you know, swamped by the abundance of uh, uh, lesser patterns that, that we see out there. So perhaps a solution uh, to this problem is to look at um, local correlation, uh, which we decided to do. Uh, but first, let's just explore a couple of these data sets. So you're just, this is a subset of Army City. Uh, uh, these are 20 meter boxes, so was it uh, uh, 80 by 60 meters? And so I'm just using uh, red, green, uh, or you know, RGB color composites. Here's red and green. So if you, if you have high red and high green, you get yellow. So wherever there's yellow, we have mutually uh, uh, robust uh, anomalies uh, in, in this particular data set between Earth resistance and GPR. And I'm just pointing out some of them. We see uh, yeah, some parallel uh, anomalies here that are highs with highs. But I want to emphasize that uh, high values do not necessarily imply correlation. Because remember, correlation means a linear relationship. So highs and highs don't always mean strong Pearson's R. But uh, it suggests there, there could be some strong correlations. Here's uh, magnetic susceptibility and earth resistance. And you can see uh, uh, so this uh, magenta color would be um, uh, mutually high values in, in this result. And then uh, GPR and magnetic susceptibility, the final comparison, uh, uh, high green and high blue make cyan, so uh, uh, we see some uh, a few areas of highs and highs again, so there, there should be some strong relationships. And then finally, just to make, for completeness, here's all three data sets, so we can use red, red green, blue color compositing, and uh, by this scale, uh, if all are high, we get white, right? Because high green, high blue, high red make a uh, white. And uh, we, we see here, uh, yes, yeah, there's some, some uh, mutually, mutual anomalies showing up in all three modalities. Uh, so a lot of apparent relationships. And let, let's see, uh, let's look at local correlation. So, uh, I decided to explore three local neighborhoods. This is a 0.71 meter radius, nine cells for each correlation, 1.2 meter, meter radius for 21 cells, 1.6 meters for 31 cells. So the idea is you, you have this moving window and each one you compute Pearson's R, right? Or, or Spearman's row if you want a non-parametric one. But, uh, and you just pass this window uh, over the data and each time you get Pearson's R, uh, you know, a per cell basis, okay. And so here's what a uh, local correlation looks like between earth resistance and GPR for uh, the small neighborhood and to the large neighborhood. And you can see you, you get a smoothing effect with the larger neighborhood. Uh, in white we have a high positive correlation and black a high negative correlation. Uh, but we see you know, there's some really strong uh, uh, you know, patterns of relationship here. Um, so uh, high resistance, you know, does that you know, influence higher GPR amplitudes? There's like, you know, theoretical nuances here that could be quite interesting to explore. Uh, just looking at some of the statistics here, we can see, uh, you know, the correlations go, you know, from minus 0 0.98 to plus 0.99 for the narrow window. Uh, as the um, radius gets larger, the variance goes down. As you might, you know, so we see the smoothing effect quantitatively here. So a uh, you know, picture of the relationship between two modalities here. I thought we'd explore uh, some of the details here. So I took, uh, there's like a, a wall right here. You can see it taking a, a single cross section, which we could uh, explore here. So here's a... Uh, Earth resistance and GPR, this is a depth slice about uh, 20 to 45 centimeters below surface. Um, and here's uh, the narrow radius correlation map to a high radius for the same window. 
you know, what's kind of interesting here, I don't know if you can make out, but it's, it's high correlation going up. And then at the crest, uh, the peak of the anomaly, the correlation actually drops. And we can see that better here in the cross section. Here's a high GPR, high earth resistance in uh, the, cro the cross section going across. Um, and then for the narrow radius, we get high correlation going up in point eight right here at point A. And then it goes down to point two at the, at the peak of the anomaly. And then uh, on the other slope, it goes up to uh, you know, roughly 0.8 again, and then, then down. Um, and then with the wider, with the wider radiuses, uh, you get a smoothing effect. And you can see the smoothing right here. Right. Uh, just going up here is uh, at point A, uh, point 0.8, right at the crest, it's almost flat again. And then coming down, it's uh, uh, high again. So. Uh, this you know, illustrates uh, you know, high robust anomalies do not necessarily imply correlations. It's kind of an uh, interesting thing I did, you know, that you can see graphically right here. You know. uh, so uh, I said, well, what is high correlation? I got arbitrarily uh, took uh, r greater than 0.7, greater than or equal to 0.7. So that's 49% or about half the variance in common we see in red here. Uh, so here's uh, earth resistance and here's um, GPR. And what, what surprises me here, I mean, you can see uh, clearly there's high correlation in some of these robust uh, features, uh, but there's a lot of high correlations where there's no apparent anomaly. And so what's going on? There's, you know, minor perturbations uh, in, in the background uh, where there happens to be a uh, uh, strong correlation in, in these... Uh, um, minor background areas up in here and here, so uh, just just uh, some random variation, non-robust, no, no anomalies apparent at all. In fact, yet yet some high correlation. So uh, how can we use this to quantify? Uh, or I want to indicate places where there's robust anomalies and high correlation. So I I, I went to to GIS methods. Uh, so here we have uh, in Red and black, we have the 50% of the highest earth resistance anomalies. And in green and black, the 50% of the uh, uh, highest GPR anomalies. And in black is the Boolean intersection uh, of um, the, the, the uh, highest anomalies, uh, GPR and earth resistance. So uh, black here is now gray here. And then I can intersect those with the high correlation. And, so it's a way to isolate uh, high correlation with the most robust anomalies in both data sets we, we see in red here. And then the white outlines are uh, high correlation with, without anomalies, basically. See. So I, 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 you know, th let's take a look at it that way. And then we could superimpose those in here. We have uh, high correlations with robust anomalies shown uh, uh, for GPR and ER here. So. Uh, See the same places, right? Going here and here, uh, here and, and here, up here, up here, and, and so on. Um, so let's look at the other data set. So her, here's uh, the correlation map between earth resistance and mag magnetic susceptibility. Uh, here's the Boolean intersection in gray of the highest 50% uh, uh, for both of those modalities, and in red, the high correlation places. And, and we can see the map in here, high correlation with robust anomalies in, in both modalities. So, uh, and then the final one here was uh, GPR and magnetic susceptibility, the correlation map, the intersection of robust anomalies in gray, and then the intersection uh, with high correlation in red, and then superimposed on the base images here. Uh, Showing where you know high correlation and robust anomalies occur. Um, so I'll, I'll talk more you know more about interpretation in a second. Um, but I, I wanted to look at this approach. Uh, we have some places we saw in this red, green, blue composite um, where all all three data sets are high, mainly where it's white in here, right? So. Uh, GPR and earth resistance and magnetic susceptibility are all, all give robust anomalies. Some of these places, um, here's a spot here and over here and so on. And uh, how can we uh, quantify 
relationships between three or more variables. So I, I went to a, a, pr a principal components approach. Uh, so I'm using a, a, a local principal component. So in, in the 1.2 meter radius window. Okay. Uh, so we could do a, a local PCA. And in, in, I was in the R session yesterday. I think so, some of you were there. Uh, so I'm using mainly uh, uh, GW models in our program for geographically weighted uh, uh, models. And then it uses the SP package as well. Uh, and then I, you know, I, I do the processing in R and throw it back in, in GIS here. Uh, but I, I looked at the first principal component. So I standardized the data. It's locally standardized in each window. And so uh, by standardized, it means each uh, data set has a variance of one, so the maximum variance would be three if there's perfect correlation uh, with principal component one. And we see uh, black is one, which means there's no, no correlation with uh, the first component, basically up to 2.87, so almost perfect correlation in white here. So in white, we see where all three are highly correlated with the, uh, the, the first principal component in a local 1.2 meter radius neighborhood. Uh, and then, so, so that was all, all you know, correlations, but here is loading in the same direction, so parallel co covariation on that first component. Uh, correlation in any direction, and, and this is just correlation, uh, parallel covariation, highs with highs, basically. Uh, Right, and you can see a, a little bit better correspondence. So what I did, I found uh, the intersection of the 50% largest uh, uh, anomalies uh, in this one, uh, in, in red here, right? So from the, uh, uh, in red we have the, the most robust and then the highest uh, eigenvalues uh, from about uh, a little bit more than two up to, to 2.87. Uh, so showing you know, parallel co-variation for all three modalities intersected with uh, uh, robustness on, on the data sets. Uh, so gr greater than 75% of the variance and, and robust in intersections with, with that. So a way to get at it, trivariate correlation or four variable correlation, something like that. Try, try and figure out a way to do that. And it, this seemed to work, I think. Uh, so just... Uh, uh, what, what does all this mean? I, uh, you know, it's a way to quantify strength of relationships. And, and statistically, it only means that two, two or more variables co-vary. But geophysically, it might aid interpretation, uh, for example, uh, uh, maybe explaining why you get better GPR reflections by looking at where, where uh, it correlates best with high resistivity or, or low, uh, low conductivity, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and some of those other relationships as well. Uh, and it might give us a more nuanced understanding of what's going on between our various data sets. Um, and uh, maybe uh, this kind of work could be uh, uh, more central to the increasing data integration studies we're seeing by giving a quantitative component to these relationships. And of course, linear correlation forms the basis of uh, all higher uh, statistical methods. We, you know, we go to local regressions, uh, principal components and so on, uh, it's all based on, on correlation, right? So here's a, here's a way to look at relationships, but by going to a local level, and we can identify robust anomalies by, by doing that. So, uh, uh, thank you, I think that's, that's all I have to say about it.